Hi there, and welcome to Santa Says. Now today we've got a special treat. We're going to be reading this book right here, and it is an incredible book. It's well written. It talks about things that you might be going through, possibly, or maybe you know somebody that is, and this could give you ideas of how to help them. And it's called Virginia Woolf. It's written by Keo McClare and illustrated by Isabel Arsenal. And you can see on the back here, it's published by Kids Can Press in Canada. Now let's take a look, shall we? Virginia Woolf. One day, my sister Virginia, she woke up feeling wolfish. She made wolf sounds and did strange things. Oh my, it looks like she broke her alarm clock. I don't think she wants to get out of bed today, does she? When I painted her picture, she growled, Vanessa, don't! And when her friends rung the doorbell, she moaned, I'm not home! And she scared everyone away. She said, don't wear that cheerful yellow dress. It's my favorite dress. Don't brush your teeth so loudly. And she even told the birds, stop that racket. The whole house sank. Up became down. Bright became dim. Glad became gloom. I did my best to cheer her up. I offered her treats. She wolfed them all down. But it made no difference. Nothing pleased her. Not the cat. Not my violin. Not even making faces at our brother Toby. She pulled up the covers and said, Leave me alone. And then she said nothing to anybody. Now look over here. We've got some tea, some cupcakes some treats. There's the cat oh, and the violin, but none of that seemed to cheer her up. Mm. Poor Virginia. I lay beside her on the bed. We were two quiet lumps under the blanket. We sank deep amongst the pillows. We looked out the window and gazed at the sky, and we watched the clouds, a smudgy sailboat, a flying llama, and a floating castle. It was like a whole other world. And still, my sister said nothing to anybody. After a while, I said, there must be something that will make you feel better. I said, please, Virginia. I said, say something. Finally, she replied, if I were flying high right now, I might feel better. If you were flying, where would you like to go? I opened her atlas and I named a few places. Paris? No. Tokyo? No. Mexico City? No, she said. If I were flying, I would travel to a perfect place. A place with frosted cakes and beautiful flowers and excellent trees to climb and absolutely no doldrums. Where is that? I asked. And she thought for a moment and said, Bloomsbury, of course. Oh, Bloomsbury? I've never heard of it. Is, is it near Burlington? And she shook her head and sighed. Buffalo? I asked. I don't think so, she growled and slipped back under the covers. I flipped through the atlas, but I found no Bloomsbury. No perfect place. I didn't tell my sister, but but I had an idea. I found my art box in a stack of old papers, and I tiptoed around the room while my sister napped. Oh, here's the color coming back. I made a garden. I painted trees and strange candy blossoms and green shoots and frosted cakes. 
I painted leaves that said hush in the wind and fruit that squeaked. And slowly I created a place called Bloomsbury. I made it look just the way it sounded. My sister woke up. At first she was too busy howling at the moon to notice what I was doing. And I painted a swing and a ladder that reached up to the window so that what was down could climb back up. My sister started to pay attention. I brought the outside inside. I painted floating petals that look like confetti. My sister stood up and helped. She said, wolves like to wander around, so we painted a field with a big roaming space. We made turquoise birds and purple butterflies out of colored paper, and Virginia told a story about a gray-shelled snail that passed along the earth and reached the top of the mountain without even realizing it. Oh, look, there's candy canes. <laughs> My favorite. And the whole house lifted. Down became up. Dim became bright. And gloom became glad. When we were done, it was past midnight and everyone slept soundly. The next morning, my sister woke up and said, the, the flowers are floppy. I nodded. And the trees look like lollipops. I nodded again. And that shrub looks like an elephant. She laughed. You hate it, I groaned. No, she said, it's perfect. I love it. And I smiled. She looked different, so I asked her how she felt. Much better, she said, looking a bit sheepish. Do you really feel better? I asked. Yes, she smiled and took my hand. Now, let's go play outside. Now, oh, look at this incredible artwork, such lovely lines and colors. It's just a beautiful book. And what a wonderful thing she did for her sister. Thank you so much for listening, and I wish you the best day ever.